Hello and welcome to the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. How rude. lovely people and welcome to the May 2019 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name is Leslie and this is a podcast about all the yarn crafts, predominantly knitting and crochet, but a bit of weaving, bit of spinning, bit of anything else really. Um, and it's recorded uh, on the south coast of England. I record throughout the month so you'll see me in various places. Um, and then I put it all together and upload on the last weekend of the month. Thank you so much for coming to say hi, whether you've said hi or not. And uh, whether you're a, a new viewer or returning viewer, thank you so much. Really great to, to have you in this little corner of the world. So thank you. Um, if you are new and you're wondering why it's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast, when it will become quite evident as we go through that I'm not short of yarn. Uh, the reason for that is I usually buy single skeins or small amounts rather than enough for a, a whole item. So I end up putting a bit of stripe in or a colour block or something. So that's the reason for the name. Now a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We have made it to over 3,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. I will be doing a draw later of a prize um, as a little thank you because I really am appreciative of everyone who comments, likes, subscribes, all the things. So thank you very, very much. Now, unusually, I'm going to start this month's podcast with a bit of stash acquisition. Now, those of you who've been following me for a little while will know that I haven't actually bought yarn, with the exception of my trip to Unravel. I haven't actually bought yarn for about 18 months now. But I do keep acquiring it, and I'm not at all ungrateful. <laughs> and this was actually a swap. What I'm about to show you is a swap. So the lovely Marceline Haybrow... Sorry, Marceline. Hay Brownberry on all of the social medias, including her YouTube channel. I'm assuming you already watch her channel, but if not, why not? And I'll put a link in the um, description box below. She got in contact, she saw some yarn that I'd used, knew that I'd kind of finished the project and said, would I be interested because it's something she uses. So absolutely delighted to swap with her. So thank you very much for suggesting it. And I'm going to share with you some of the stuff that she sent through to me. There was a, a canvas bag that she sent through and some yarns. So this beauty, and I think the colour is showing up reasonably well. This is Sweet Fibre Yarns, Sweet Merino Light. So that's a fingering four ply weight single ply merino yarn lovely texture lovely and soft and that's in the colorway smoke so that's the first one the second now this is much greener than it's showing up uh, i know i record this in a kind of slightly strange way with the light um the reason why I don't face the light is for two reasons. Firstly, I wear glasses and all you'll get is the glare from those. But also I record with my yarn behind me and oddly enough, I don't want my yarn opposite the window because I'll end up with all sorts of gradients I wasn't expecting as it fades. So, uh, so apologies for the light. But this is a beautiful variegated green yarn and it is Bayview Fibre Arts they're Ferguson BFL, and that's in the Before the Leaves Fall colour. So really lovely greens uh, into sort of browns and oranges. The autumnal side of green, you can see how they chose the name. So absolutely beautiful yarn, so thank you again for that. And this beauty, 
and again I don't think it's oh no that's better that's showing up the colors nicely this is um, Malabrigo sock and it's in the Anniversario or Anniversario colorway which is number five so, and there was some other stuff as well so thank you so much Mars that's um it's been really lovely to swap with you I hope that your parcels got to you okay I sent it off track delivery and everything so I'm hoping that's got to you fine and thank you really lovely colors yarns that I wouldn't have come across so big thank you for that now as I'm recording this it is a bank holiday Monday in the UK and it's May Day and where I live there's a big thing going on uh, it's called Jack in the Green and it's quite pagan in its origin and it's about releasing the spirit of summer and the drumming group that I belong to has two events this weekend and as I record this they're probably having a little um should we call it a refreshment break at the moment uh, they'll have trudged up to the castle where so they've gone all through the town, trudged up to the castle and they'll be having a break. I think they're due on the stage in just under an hour. I'm not there, as you've noticed, um, <laughs> because I'm here. Uh, various reasons for that, uh, mainly relating to my dog. Um, himself is away this weekend and apparently not buying me yarn. <laughs> There'll be words, they may not be polite. However, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very long event because it starts at about nine o'clock in the morning. It will go on till mid-afternoon, possibly later, and the dog would be left on her own for too long. And I know I have friends that very kindly do come in and let her out when I need them to and that sort of thing. But I, I don't like to take advantage of the favours. So, um, so the rest of the gang are there. Also, it's the one event where a lot of people turn up a lot of people in the drummer group turn up even if you don't see them from one week to the next at practice naughty me so yes they i won't be missed there'll, there'll be plenty of people there so uh so yeah that's happening at the moment however we did have yesterday what is my favorite uh drumming event that we do it's called the drum off and we are involved with another local drum group, very different style of music. They do South American, um, well, they're called Sambalanco, so that kind of tells you what sort of music they do. And we parade in, we parade around the old town in Hastings, then we go into a, an open area and we play a song, they play a song and so forth. So I've got some footage for you here. Uh, and this first bit of footage was me just before I left, so you can see the glory that is my drumming costume. Well, my lovely people, I'm just about ready for my favourite drumming event of the year, which is the drum off. It's part of the uh, Jack in the Green celebration. So all dressed up, somewhere to go. Just got to finish off the ensemble. Well, a lady's a lady's not a lady without a hat. It's going to get noisy. Now, as the next bit of footage will show, or the next two bits, um, if you're not used to our drumming group, you probably think, oh, Leslie, what a completely over-the-top bit of makeup. You ain't seen nothing yet. Have a look at some of the folks in the group. Their costumes are amazing. And I take my virtual hat off to them, or actually yesterday my actual hat off to them, because some of the costumes that um, the folks put together are absolutely fantastic. So this first bit of footage was us listening to San Malenko as they played one of their tunes.
and this last bit is us as well there was I said last month that my problem is I can't record it while I'm drumming because um yeah it just really wouldn't work however we do have some pieces where my particular drum I'm a tom tom drummer um isn't playing during some of it so I was able to record and this is one of our sort of signature pieces uh called Flying Scotsman to emulate a train I couldn't record all of it because um I was drawing some of it but uh, this gives you an idea of kind of what we're doing Well, this is what I look like after the drum off. Someone needs a cuddle because she's been on her own this afternoon. But it was a lot of fun. You've hopefully just seen a bit of footage. And we were fortunate with the weather. There was a high chance of rain at um, four o'clock, which is when we were due to start our drum off. But uh, the rain held off, so we're very glad for that. So now it's time for a cup of tea, cuddle the dog, get some of this stuff off my hair and off my face <laughs> and um, a bit of a return to normal whatever that means right that's all the drumming back to the crafty stuff I seem to have um, I seem to be near the beginning of projects this month I finished a shawl and a sweater or cardigan last month and I seem to be kind of early stages of stuff so I don't know yet if there'll be a finished object I'm also suffering from a bit of cast on itis and I really want to cast on some things because they're pretty so um, it may be that we have a lot of works in progress but nothing actually finished who knows what the future brings well, clearly, nobody. Uh, one of the things I definitely want to cast on are some socks. Now, I'm not someone who makes a lot of socks. And I think part of the reason for that is I have very large feet, quite large legs, and it's not a quick project. However, Amy from the Stranded podcast is running a knit along to make the Rose City Roller socks. And these are little shorty socks, so there isn't that long bit of leg to do. Um, the Stranded Roller Derby, as one of her subscribers suggested it be called, top name. Um, so I am going to do that. Oh, sorry, voice went a bit old. <clears throat> um, I have some yarn in mind. I've got some Aracania Ranco in a sort of bluey colour, which I can't find at the moment. And following the Gretchen Rubin advice, if you can't find something, tidy up. I think that's what I need to do. Also, because I've got through some stash recently, um, some of the boxes that I have in addition to the three cupboards um, have emptied so I can move stuff around. So that's all good. So after I've finished recording this section, I'm going to spend a wee while having a go through the stash, probably discovering things that um, I hadn't forgotten, I'd forgotten I had could happen um, and hopefully I'll find this sock yarn so that I can start on the Rose City rollers. There are also a couple of crochet sweaters that I, I want to make and as I've finished a crochet garment I feel kind of justified to start one. Yeah, we'll see. Right, my lovely people, I'm going to give you an update on a couple of very old, nay, almost forgotten projects. Uh, when I was on the train to Eastbourne last month, I was knitting and someone asked to see what it was. I was knitting and it's a project that's been on the go for probably nearly a couple of years now. And it's my adaptation of the panel jacket by Carol Lapin. And I say my adaptation because mine's going to look very, very different. 
there's the picture of the original so as you can see it's garter stitch it's panelled it has a shaped back the only difference is the, sorry the only thing in common is I'm doing it in panels so I don't want to give her the blame for anything that I make um, she is the inspiration in terms of the panel design but there really is absolutely nothing in common between that and what I'm about to show you so I've been making the panels over a long period of time this is part of the back and I've got another panel to go on each side of the back and then do the fronts I've also got the sleeves done and this is one of them and the yarn so far I say so far because there isn't enough of course but the main yarn that you can see here the variegated yarn is Aracania or Aracania Ranco and the grey is a King Colm Merino yarn and I am crocheting the panels together now this was something I saw on Pinterest and I thought it was quite a nice technique so rather than sew them together or three needle bind off or anything like that it's a, a crochet technique so it's putting a bit of a seam so this will be sort of down the top of the sleeve comme ça So that's where we're at. Um, I have done one more panel to go on, both sleeves are done, one more panel to go on the back and another one blocking. Um, I really need to just keep going and see what happens when I run out of yarn, which I will. I mean, that's, that's inevitable because I need two panels at the front as well. So the back one is slightly wider and that's the equivalent of the back neck. Uh, and then you have these side panels. This, um, like I say, it's a slow project. I kind of work on it as and when. It's almost the equivalent of sock knitting for me because it's very simple, straightforward, stocking stitch. doesn't require any thought once it's on the needles. I just make sure I stop at the right place. So, um, I also am going to run out of the grey, the solid grey which may be more problematic because I do want to keep some consistency with the borders and the joining. I was also hoping to do a kind of all the way around panel probably in garter stitch to give it a kind of slightly shawl collar and to finish it all. I'm not going to definitely not going to have enough of the King Cole Merino for that. I do have some other grey four ply weight yarn that himself brought me back from one of his trips last year which I think would be a very good substitute so onwards and onwards with that I will keep you apprised once there's anything more exciting to look at um, but that's kind of where we're at with that one so it is still going for those who remember it uh, for those who saw me knitting last month and wondered what I was knitting that's what it is but we're um, a long way from finished objects on that one. Now the other project I'm going to show you, if you recall a cold January day in 2018 when the first episode went up and you no doubt thought, who is that? Um, I was talking about a crochet project I was working on which was a curtain for a glass panel in the door of my downstairs cloakroom. Now let me reassure those who weren't reassured at the time, there is something over that glass panel it's not an indiscreet close groom but I wanted to make a pattern that matched the um, the, the woodwork of our banister rail. I was working along quite happily using some crochet cotton it was some stuff that I would bought in uh, Lidl quite some time ago and I'd used quite a bit of it in other projects I'd actually made some cinctures and I didn't even know what a cincture was but it's um, I have a, a friend who's a deacon at the local Catholic Church and it's the long kind of belt thing I'll put a picture up here um, so yes that's uh, something I was using that cotton for but I thought I had plenty of it and then I had to stop my project because I couldn't find it now I know I'm not a tidy person I'm not a very organized person but I just couldn't find it at all and that was kind of stewing on my mind a bit because 
my yarn is kind of all in one place pretty much I mean it's in the three cupboards so in theory if I went through all even if I had to go all three I would find it and I just couldn't find it at all so that was worrying me and then I went to sort out a drawer in a cupboard and I remembered I'd made this bag well I'm not even sure if it's a bag or a cushion cover I've put so many buttons on it and buttonholes it could be uh, could be either but I think I know where most of that white cotton went now. <laughs> uh, this was also made using uh, embroidery cotton, I think. I had several skeins of that that had been found in the loft in our old house. And uh, I don't do a lot of embroidery, so I thought I would knit with it because thread's thread. And I just u had used it to store odd balls of, of yarn. And there's quite a tangle going on in here, but odd bits of of acrylic mostly double knitting weight so that's where that white went now I'm not going to unpick that um, because looking at it I still won't have enough for the curtain I'm pretty sure of that and also in my stash I do have some similar weight white cotton again if you've been watching for a long time you know that a couple of years ago a local shop was selling a load of cones that had come from Texair Yarns, which uh, was a business that unfortunately failed. And a lot of these cones were very fine sort of lace or thread weight. And I made a cardigan where I used five together and that kind of thing. So I have a couple of these to hand. So I am carrying on with the curtain. And at the moment I've got one of the little, the last of the little cones and the um, the new one and we are here so very simple pattern as you can see columns of shells columns of filet and this little bit here is where there's a sort of stylized tulip pattern coming where that's going in and I'm going to stagger those to match the staggering on the banister that's the plan so I'm back on the crochet curtain after a long hiatus thanks to the fact that I hadn't that bag had never been kind of logged anywhere so I didn't have the yarn logged as used. Oh well, there, as my father will often tell me there are no problems there are only solutions. Hmm, some of the solutions great pro no let's not go there. Yeah, so I'm back on those two projects. If you've been watching for a long time, you'll have seen them before. If you haven't been watching for a long time, new projects, how exciting. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Hello, lovely people. It's a bright and sunny day. It's actually much colder than it looks, but uh, I'm sitting in the car, so it's bright and sunny. And I'm in an exciting new location because, and a lorry's coming along so it might get noisy but we'll keep going, um, there is a new crematorium near where I live. Now for relatively new um, watchers of the podcast you might be thinking, what? Uh, I conduct funerals for my job so <laughs> that's why I uh, am interested in local crematoria. And this is a new one, I was here yesterday, it opened last week. Apparently I was the first celebrant here, they've had a couple of um, vicars and ministers of religion, but I was the first celebrant, so uh, I guess that's some kind of claim to fame, I don't know. But yes, it's all new and shiny and a few teething problems, but nothing we can't get around. So uh, so I'm here again, and uh, it's very sunny, which is lovely. So I'm still working on a, a cat rescue blanket using corner-to-corner -corner crochet. And uh, just plodding on. There's uh, been a lot of discussion recently about size inclusivity on uh, Instagram in particular. And this is a subject that I uh, know something about. In fact, the reason why I ever designed my own patterns in the first place, back when I was young and foolish, as opposed to older and foolish, um, was because I couldn't find things to fit me. I've always been... Um, above average, shall we say, in sizing. And um, yeah, I, that's why I started. So it's something that interests me, but it, it's made me kind of stop and think. And one of the things I've got on the go at the moment is the 
Leaps and Bounds sweater. And it's the first time I've made a fitted sweater. And I really like the pattern. I really like the yarn. But for some reason, I'm not feeling the love for making the sweater. And I think it's because I have a fear it's not going to fit by the time I've finished. Um, so it's a fitted sweater. It's worked bottom up in pieces. And even if it was too small, I could put a side panel in, something like that. But I am resisting because, and I think it's because I, I don't know if it'll fit or not. So I'm going to do something that I possibly should have done quite some time ago. And with himself's help, I'm going to compile all my measurements. Because in the past, I've always just made the biggest size that I assume will sort of fit. And most of my things are kind of baggy and oversized anyway. Um, so I've done an awful lot of winging it. And I'm not going to wing it with this. I'm going to uh, measure myself. If I need to frog back what I've done and start again, then I will. Because it's a lovely pattern. It's gorgeous yarn. So I want it to look as it should look, not uncomfortable or... You know, I make it and then not wear it because it doesn't quite fit as it should. So it's only taken me 51 years to reach this conclusion, but I, it's something I need to do. Um, I've also got on the go a sock. And again, I haven't just made the largest size and hoped. I've measured my foot. Now, I have very large feet. I will do a, a section later in the podcast about the socks um, and you will see. The enormity of my feet. I will never fall over in a high wind. Let's put it that way. Um, call me the Sussex Susquatch. But um, I measured my foot and I've increased the pattern accordingly. And that's fine. If that's what I need to do, that's what I need to do. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Sun is shining. People are wandering around looking lost because this is all new. But it's very shiny. And yeah, sorry, random strangers who I'll be talking at later. Uh, I'm actually quite early for my ceremony, but quite a few cars are arriving. Uh, my ceremony is in 40 minutes time, but I think because it is a new venue, people are, are coming early to, to make sure that they found it. Uh, yesterday's ceremony, we did have a few late comers. I think it was kind of trying to find it, work out where it was. You don't think about these places being new. The, the local churches and crematoria and funeral homes, they've kind of been there forever. So to have one that's um, in a new location is, is a bit odd. But um, it was felt it was needed. It's, it's near a town where there's been an awful lot of building in the last sort of, 10, 15 years. The population has grown quite considerably. And we're in the southeast of England, which is fairly highly populous as it is. So it makes sense to have built it and it's a way for the local authority to boost their income. So uh, that's understandable as well. Uh, I've nearly finished this cat blanket, I think. Um, I think for a little while, because I've got quite a few projects on the go, including things like socks... I might not do the charity work for a little while. I'll see how it goes, but I might want to carry on with some of the the easy to pick up and put down projects and kind of keep cracking on with them and and get some stuff finished. It feels, although I've had a, a bout of cast on itis, it does feel as if I've got stuff on the go that's been hanging around for quite some time. Um, I may even bring that um, curtain with me and sort of crack on with that whilst I'm waiting because um, that will be fairly easy to to put down as I need to and pick up again and just sort of carry on with that and feel like I've got some of these old projects under my belt. Um, it's, it's all right casting on new ones, but if you've got stuff that you realise is kind of 18 months old, it'd be quite nice to get it finished really, wouldn't it? That's the plan. Hello my lovelies, got a bit of spinning to show you. I started last month with a very uneven thing of yarn. I now have a slightly more even ball of yarn. 
I bought some fibre, which isn't the same as buying yarn, is it? So we're okay. I hope. And uh, in amongst this fibre, which I'm about to throw all over the floor, um, there were lots of different bits, which was great because I just wanted it to practice on. It was a kind of bin end selection, so there's all sorts. Uh, what was good about it is that as I was spinning, I could feel the different staple lengths, so I could feel the different fibres and the different properties of them. What was bad about it is I've no idea what this stuff was because it was just a, a carrier bag full of fluff and none of it was labelled. But that's okay because it just was for practice. So we've got some different colours in there. This grey is actually fairly even, I've no idea what it is. Feels quite kind of rustic, it's not one of the smooth, short staply ones, but uh, this lovely red. So yeah, I've got all sorts in here. Got some white, so this is what I started with. So it's still uneven in places, and it's going to be, because it's still only the third ball of yarn I've ever tried to make. So, you know, it's, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's okay. We will live. It's all right. Now, as I'm winding this up, um, it occurs to me I don't have much by way of finished objects this month. Um, and it, in one sense, I was thinking, God, that's a bit pathetic because, you know, it's been a month and I haven't finished anything. And I've got a couple of little bits to show you towards the end, but nothing much. And then I thought, well, it's not a race. It doesn't matter. And I have heard comments that some people find podcasters almost a bit intimidating by the amount of yarn, uh, amount of projects they get through because most people don't get through that many and it, it really is a personal thing I mean yeah some people knit faster than others crochet faster than others um others don't for reasons of just that's how quickly they knit they perhaps have physical reasons that they knit at a different pace or maybe just time and life pressures you know so it's it's definitely not a race and you know hopefully this is still entertaining I mean I know you come for the knitting and crochet but you stay for the witty repartee and madrigal singing recipe tips I don't know I, I really don't know why you're here but I'm, I'm very grateful that you are so thank you <laughs> smash you and on that note actually we've reached the 3,000 subscribers so thank you to everyone who has clicked that button I really do appreciate it now I was going to try and do something uh, where I could just pull out a random subscriber name but YouTube won't let me do that um, you can get a list of subscribers but it only shows the most recent it won't show those whose accounts are set to private so I'm gonna have to do the giveaway based on comments to do it as a random thing so if you'd like a chance at winning this prize, and I'll go through it in just a sec, um, please just make a comment. There's no prompt question. You don't have to give any thought to it. You can just say hi. You can just say hello. You can just put an emoji up. It could be that brown squiggly one if that's how you're feeling. That is absolutely fine. Uh, if you can just put a comment on and then I can randomly select a comment so I can get in touch with you and let you know that you've won. So, um, Yes, apologies that that's delaying this, but I thought the technology would do something that I don't think it does. So what is the prize that you'll be commenting for? Well, just a quick reminder, we have these three balls of <laughs> Shetland yarn. These are all undyed. They're from Isle Inspired Fibres. Each one is on the floor. It's 25 grams, just around the 100 metre mark. So three of them, one's just rolled over there but I will pick it up and you get that with this lovely bag made by the fabulous Sue in Auckland who's kindly sent it over as a prize so we've got these New Zealand birds on it it's actually a really pretty kind of swirly the light I think is not going to help it's a very bright sunny day but you've got a lovely fabric on the inside it's got a pocket for all your bits and pieces really good size drawstring bag absolutely lovely beautifully made so thank you again sue and a lucky person can win this like i say just any comment at all you can be as facetious and as flippant as you like that would appeal that would be fine <laughs> just anything at all just in the comments to give you a chance to win this because then i can go in random comment selector 
and that will be fine. So I'll be giving this away next month when I will also be announcing the winners of quarter two. Quarter two of the year, my goodness. Um, for the stash cow, stash mal, stash crochet along, stash make along, stash everything along, um, that I'm running with the lovely Barbara from the Flame and Fibre podcast. And uh, just a very quick recap on the rules, which you're probably sick of me saying, but I'm going to anyway. To be eligible for the project to be in the stash cow, the yarn had to be in your stash as at the end of 2018. Project can't have been started before the 1st of January 2019. That's it. Anything that fits those rules can um, can be in it. Uh, you can double dip with other make-alongs that are going on. I was watching um, Angie B knitter next door. She just finished something. She's entering it in another knit along, but it's coming into ours as well because it applies. So that's all good. And yep, next month I'll be drawing a prize from the finished object thread and also a pattern giveaway from the chatter thread. So even if you just go on there, look at someone else's um, project and just say, oh, I really like the colour or nicely done or whatever, you're then eligible for a prize. So please do come and play. It'll be lovely. And talking of podcasts, another new to me one, and relatively new, I think she's on episode nine, is Rosie of Rosie's Knitting Shed. Uh, thanks to Chevers from Chevy Rail for bringing her to our attention. Uh, Rosie is in Cumbria, which is in the northwest of England. And she has uh, an Etsy shop, she's an indie dyer, and she's good fun. She shows you the socks she's made by, you know, putting her foot up in front of the camera. Please be assured, I will not be doing that. You're okay. Especially as I'm wearing a skirt today. Um, yeah, so she's good fun. Quite short podcast, or 10, 20 minute mark. Just there's an, um, an energy about her I find very appealing. So if you're after a short, fun knitting podcast, Rosie's Knitting Shed, and I'll put the link in the information bar below. Thank you. Hello lovely people. Now firstly I apologise that I'm looking a bit to uh, what my mum used to call white and spiteful. I've got no makeup on my face. I'm drumming later and I'm going to have to put a whole lot of war paint on. So uh, so that's why we are where we are. Um, I said that I hadn't done much knitting this month and that's true. Or crocheting or spinning or anything much. But I will show you what I have done. Oh I need to iron my t-shirt. Sorry. <clears throat> Anyway, that won't happen this morning. Uh, I have made a sock. And I have the other one up to about here. So we're, we're kind of getting there. Um, these are the Rose City Roller socks by Mara Catherine Briner. I think that's it. I'll put the details in the, the bar below. And I am making this as part of the Stranded Roller Derby. May Amy has a knit along going on this month to make a pair of adult size socks by this designer, Mara Catherine Briner. And I mean, look at the length of that. That's my foot, it's bigger than my head by how much? Oh, anyway, my mother looks after my feet too well. <laughs> so this is the first of the socks. And it's um, a shorty sock, as you can see, little rolled cuff there, slip stitch, heel, flap, gusset, and then just straight. And she gives you an option of a rounded toe or a more chiselled toe. I went for the rounded. I will put them on and show you them when I've made the other one, which I have to do by the end of this month. Um, so that'll be next Friday to be eligible for the giveaway draw. So I'm also going to show you my somewhat homemade, I hope you can see that okay, let me find something to put it against, my homemade sock blocker, <laughs> which as you can see I made from a wire coat hanger. They don't have to look as weird as this. To make a regular sock blocker, you've got the coat hanger like that, just pull down and then push in. So. Yeah, I'm not going to push it back out because it'll never fit again. But yeah, very simple to make. Like I say, just pull down along the bottom straight edge opposite here. And then push in what was one of the sticky outy bits. Push it in 
and you have a fairly reasonable size and shape sock blocker. But because I have very, very large feet, I had to do a bit of manhandling with it. So that's why it looks slightly peculiar, but it works for the socks. I will go into more detail on the sock when I finish the other one. Um, it's made from a, um, some old regia that I had in the stash and I will go into more details next month as I will about the Harper's Ferry shawl by Tammy Gore that, I, Tammy Gore, apologies, that I've been making. Um, we're kind of three quarters done on that so that should be finished next month and I'll go into details with that then. So a hoe and a half but the other half's in the car because it's my current car knitting. The other thing that I've been doing this week, um, Francoise Danoy, who is best known as Frenchie and on Ravelry she, and on all social media, she's a Roha Knits. And I really would suggest going to look at her designs because she is a fabulous designer. There are many of her designs in my favourites, let me tell you. Um, she um, has been running this week the five shawls in five days challenge which sounds like a real challenge because you think five shawls in five days no but what it is is a brilliant way to learn different shawl constructions so she gives you the pattern for different constructions and I'll go through them and then says knit for half an hour and then cast it off, block it, because it, it's enough to give you a sense, to give you a template of how you start the shape and then you, you go mad on it, you know, you can do whatever you like. So I just got some old acrylic from the stash. And the first is the, the probably the most common shawl shape, the triangle. Then there is the crescent. And then the others are still on my blocking boards. So we've got the asymmetrical here. The three quarter. And I'm definitely going to be making one of these. I think I'm probably going to slightly adapt it so it's bottom up because of the way I like to knit. But I think this will sit really well on the shoulders. So this will be a design that I'll work on in the future. And the semicircular, as you can see here. So It's been a really enjoyable challenge. Um, I mean, challenge doesn't feel quite right, really, because challenge makes it sound like it's really hard. And it's been a delight to do. Um, half an hour a day, a little bit more. And you learn so much just by doing, as is often the way. So thank you so much, Frenchie, for putting this challenge out. It's something that I know she's run before. If she runs it again and you're interested in shawl um, making and shawl design, I really would suggest having a look at it because... It's a real eye-opener. It's one of those things, of, of course, that's how it works. You know, that's, that's what you're knitting, thinking, oh, yeah, I can see this. But as I said, sometimes it just helps to do stuff. So um, so thank you, Frenchie, for putting that out. And if anyone's interested, look out for the next time she offers it, assuming she offers it again, because it really is a good, a good thing to do. So the five-day, five-shore challenge. The other thing, a bit of a follow-up from um, a piece I recorded earlier in the month. I was talking about my Leaps and Bounds sweaters by Himene Joseph. And I was kind of resisting working on it because my fear was it wasn't going to fit. Because I'd never really measured myself. And I think there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of conversation at the moment about um, body image. And that's been resonating with me. Because largely I'm fairly happy with who I am. Because if I wasn't, I would change it. But there are things, we all have our foibles, you know, some people think they've got a big nose or sticky out ears or something. So we're all aware of the ways that we deviate from the perceived standards. Um, so I thought, well, I better do the grown up thing and measure myself. So I got himself to help me. That was after we'd um, worked out where things should be before you measure them. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, it was quite an interesting half an hour. I did come out of it saying, does this mean we're engaged? I mean, we've been married 24 years, but you know. So, <laughs> so I've now measured myself. So I then thought, right, well, I've got my measurements. I know what I need to do. And I looked at the pattern and I looked at the gauge on the pattern. And I thought, oh, well, I need to rip it back um, 
as I half expected to, but that's okay because I know that it'll fit when I... And I thought, well, I will just double check my gauge before I rip it back. Because I've made that mistake before, rip back a whole thing and not taken the gauge, which is stupid because you've got this lovely big sample, this big swatch. And, um, gauge swatches lie. It's been said before by far better knitters than me, but it's true. Gauge swatches lie. They lie like a cheap watch. I'm kind of getting away with it. I think I'm kind of one or two stitches out, which I'm I'm happy with because of the ease I've built in. So I don't have to rip out what I've done. Not that it's that much. It's probably about that much of the back of the sweater, but it's nice not to have to rip it back. Um, the only thing I will do is on the waist shaping, I may do slightly less waist shaping on the front to accommodate the uh, fuel cell. Um, but that's okay, I can work that as I do it, that's fine. But yeah, the rest kind of works. I do just need to think about the shoulder shaping, uh, the shoulder length, and I'll I'll look at that. But I've, I'm kind of getting my mojo back, so I've got a couple of little bits I want to finish, not least the other sock and the Harper's Furry Shawl, but then I'm going to crack on with Leaps and Bounds, because it is a really lovely pattern. I'm using yarn I really enjoy working with, and I just had put it to one side so it can come out of time out and back in the mix. So that's all good. I think that's kind of it for this month. Sorry, I was distracted by someone walking down the road. How dare you? Can't you see I'm podcasting? Hello. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I'm off drumming later, so I shall look ridiculous, but uh, that's OK. We'll make a good noise. Um, I hope whatever you're doing, you're having fun. Thank you again to everyone who's joining in with the um, the make along for this year. I am really delighted seeing all the the FOs and the partially finished items. My queue and my favourites list has grown so much just seeing all the different patterns that I wouldn't have otherwise come across. So I'm very grateful to you for that. I uh, hope you feel that you're achieving stuff by getting stuff out the stash, onto the needles, onto your back or whoever's back it's supposed to be on. And yes, thank you so much for taking part. So next month I will draw for the next quarter of that as well as for the subscriber giveaway. So again, just put a comment and I'll do a random comment generator thing, clever IT stuff. I don't know. Um, from uh, for draw for that so there'll be lots of things to give away next month um, also hopefully some finished projects because I'm fairly close well definitely want to finish the other sock to enter it for the um, the draw and also I should have finished the shawl and should have cracked on with a few more things in terms of projects coming up I've got a few smallish things I want to make I'm going to make himself a cowl and I've started to think I really need to crack on with that because it's easy to think, oh, it's not not winter for ages yet, but uh, stuff takes time, so I, I want to kind of crack on with those things. So, so that will be in the mix fairly shortly. And uh, yeah, just odd bits and pieces. So I hope that you're having time to craft and that whatever you do, be it craft or not, brings you joy. Thanks so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Have a good month. See you at the end of June. Thanks. Bye-bye.